Sexual compatibility is important, but when your man's bedroom technique makes you have amnesia to all the wrongs in the relationship, it can be a recipe for disaster. On today's case, Ms. Cooper says that's what she's been dealing with in her relationship with the much younger Mr. Rosing. Ms. Cooper says she should have known she was in for relationship turmoil when Mr. Rosing introduced himself and his cucumber to her in the veggie aisle. Lord have mercy. Mr. Rosing says the constant smothering from Ms. Cooper makes him feel like he's still living with his mother. It's a lot to unwrap. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. This is the case of Cooper versus Rosie. Thank you. Ms. Cooper, you're here in court today because you say you are at the end of your rope. You say that Mr. Rosing is a sex-addicted liar and a cheater who contributes nothing to your household but heartbreak and chaos. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Rosing, you say Ms. Cooper's complaints are completely unfounded, especially since you say she knew exactly what you had to offer when the two of you entered into this relationship. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so this relationship has been together for three years. You all have no children together. You do have one child. Mr. Rosing does not. You currently live together. What brings us to court today, though, Ms. Cooper? Your Honor, he is a cheap, cheating mama's boy who is also a slob. Wow, that's like the trifecta of why the relationship isn't working. Mr. Rosing, what do you say to that? Look, Your Honor, all she really does is nag and complain to me all the time, and she's very jealous of, like, my other friends as well. Some of the friends I have are uh, women as well, but I don't date them. She's also hearing complaints about my side gig I do. I just, uh, I just want things to go back to the way they were, you know, when it was nice and calm and quiet, and uh, she just did what I told her to do, which is not nag me to death. You know, it's like living with my mother. So you are somebody that requires to be the king of the castle? Is that the way it all? No, no, I just don't want to be nagged. Fair enough. I understand. Ms. Cooper, why don't you take me back a little bit? Because you all are a May-December romance. You are 59 years old. He is 32 years old. Go, girl. At least that's what some of the chicks would say. You're a bit of a cougar here, I see. Tell me how you met. We met three years ago. I was shopping at the grocery store for some produce to make a salad, and Joe came up and made a joke about having a bigger cucumber than the one that I had which I thought was kind of funny and cute. And we went out to the car and sat in the car and talked for a couple of hours and exchanged numbers. And at and first... And you found out whether or not he was telling the truth. <laughs> yes, ma'am. How soon after you met? On the second date. On the second date. Needless to say, you liked what you saw. I did. What a very nice way to put it, Ms. Jones. Yeah, I'm, just <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to figure out to make sure I say this all correctly. What did you do on your first date? I'm curious. Uh, we went to Denny's, and we ended up talking, and I was surprised that with our age difference, we had so much in common still, and uh, we hit it off. That's all I can say is it was magic at first. What happened, Mr. Rosing, after Denny's? Well, we went back to her place, and then uh, we, went, we had sex. That was nice. Ooh, you moved quickly, Miss Cooper. How long after that first Denny's date did Mr. Rosing move into your place? It was a year and a half into the relationship. So talk to me a little bit about the dynamics of your relationship in terms of finances. Joe does not have a high-paying job. He spends money on himself and on clothes and hair products. What does Mr. Rosing do on a regular basis? He comes home from work. He spends very little time at the house. He keeps bringing stuff in when he comes home. Junk of all types and sorts, and he puts it in the bedroom. I can't even sleep in my own bed anymore because he's got so much junk in our room. Mr. Rosen, what kind of work do you do? Well, I sell furniture. Okay. You know, I have to look nice for my job to sell furniture. I can't look like a complete mess. You know, no, I definitely not. Because well, somebody can't... coming in to buy furniture... Oh, yeah, I they... can't, I can't yeah. sell furniture wearing a Slayer T-shirt. I agree. Fired. I completely agree with you. So here's my question. How do you all set up the household expenses. I'm a caregiver for the elderly. She worked with one person one time, once a month, once a month. That was it. One time? That's it? Oh, yeah, that was it. You, you only worked one day? You were gone the other times I worked. Here's my question. How do you pay for things in your house, the two of you? I've been paying for everything. I had a savings account that I've been draining to pay the rent because he's four months behind in rent, Your Honor. I give her what I can from time to time. Like, I drive 
takes about 40 minutes to get to work on a good day. But wait a minute, Mr. Mr. Rosen, you were being very critical of Ms. Cooper just a minute ago. One time she did work, it was only one time. But I just heard you say, I give her what I can. Yeah, because I got to pay for gas, and I'm, you know, I'm paying for... I have to look for the order for work and whatnot and everything. But you also got to have food there. The lights got to come on. I'm assuming you all have water that runs. Somebody has to pay for that. Do you contribute at all to that? Well, it's all part of the rent, too, as well. And like I said, I give what I can give. I'm assuming the landlord doesn't take what you can give. They take what it's supposed to be paid. Absolutely. Do you understand my point? My landlord... I yeah. yeah, I mean, my point flexible. is, I mean... if there's a $1,000 rent payment that's due, you don't get to go to the landlord and say, I'm gonna give you what I can give. Because you know what the landlord's gonna do? She's gonna throw you out. That's what the landlords are gonna do because the landlord wants their cash. Our landlord has no give and take. Well, there's really not He much. wants to be paid on the first of the month, period. And so how many times has Mr. Rosen contributed to the rental payment? Well, he was giving me a little bit here and there and I figured it out and he owes me four months rent. So that's a long time, and that's a lot of money. So, Mr. Rosen, you do realize you can't live anywhere not paying rent, though. Yeah, I'm all aware of that. I mean, uh, we can't really afford a whole lot of food. I mean, she says she cooks every once in a while, but it's not really a whole lot. Okay, but, but sir, how do you plan to make good on the fact that she's paying all the rent? Try and make more money. It's the only thing I can th really truly think of, is just to try and make more much money as I can. All right, or see if she can go out and get, like, another job, too. Here's my question. How about the alternative of her telling you, that don't work for me. I don't need somebody in here that's not going to pay their fair share. How would you feel about that? Just that'd want to tell you. That would be understandable to be, be down there, but, uh, you know, I understand that, too. But like I said, I, I'm working more than she is. And I think I'm making more, more money than she is. More money. I got savings, too. I got saved up. You know, I got at least, you know, 50 bucks saved up, I think. That's not going to help. He's so cheap, he won't even pay for dinner if we go out to eat. Do you guys go out on a regular basis? No, because all he wants to do is have sex, and he's really paranoid about the pandemic. So... Well, there's nothing to do around it. Like, during the pandemic, what was there to do? We couldn't go anywhere. Everything was shut down, and that's free. It's better than exercise. The gyms are closed down, and, you know, way better than going out anywhere. If are you ashamed me. of Ms. Cooper? Oh, no. No, no, no. Well, we wouldn't be here today. That's how I feel, though. You make me feel like you're ashamed of me. He will not introduce me to uh, his mother. I really don't like my mother meeting the people that I'm with because it's always it's always a jinx. You and like older women? I prefer their company. I don't like people my own age. An older woman allows you more shenanigans than a woman your age would put up with. By the way, Your Honor, he didn't even buy me a Christmas gift this year. I had to buy something for myself. Why not? Sometimes the places that I work for, you know, pay you right away. You have to wait two weeks to get it, and, uh... Did you get an after-Christmas gift or a New Year's gift instead? I got her what I could get her. What'd you get? Some perfume. And when did that come, ma'am? In February. It was around Valentine's Day. It was kind of a two-for-one deal. <laughs> what was your understanding when Mr. Rosing moved in? What was, what was supposed to be the relationship? Dynamics. Well, I thought he would pay his share of the rent, and I didn't know what a slob he was until he moved in with me. Did you have this conversation? In other words, did you say to him, my rent is X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna need $550 every month? I sure did. And did you understand that, Mr. Yes, Rosen? Uh, yes, ma'am, I did. You're telling me what has happened is it has not happened. That's correct, Your Honor. Oh, you say he's a slob. He is a big slob. Yeah, Our bedroom, but you can't cook, though. No. Our bedroom is full of his junk. He leaves his clothes all over the bed. You can't leave your clothes looking like that. That's tacky. Where? It looks like an episode oh, yeah. of Hoarders in that bedroom. Yeah, that's not so bad. You've just seen, just seen the worst part. It looks nasty. I go and sleep on the couch, uh, not on the bed, because the bed is in there somewhere, covered she, up with junk. She always treats me like a child, and then this, this was like, I kind of like just, Mr. I, Rosen, I just give up. That looks like a child's room. It looks like a teenage boy came home from school <laughs> and left all his stuff on the floor. Yeah. And my teenage boy is 17, and if he did that... Well, that's not all my stuff. That's some of her stuff there, too. But that's tacky, and you As know As you that. can tell, he doesn't clean up after himself. He doesn't do any so chores why don't around you clean the house. I'm at work yourself. all the time. I'm working. I'll he have, doesn't even take the garbage out. I'm, I'm exhausted. She's home all day long. But wait a minute. If it was you, the other way around, but I would But you expect her to clean up your stuff? I just want to be clear on the no, dynamic. No, 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 of course not. But, you know, if it was the other way around, I would take care of the housework if she was out working. 
Wouldn't bother me. Well, remember, I asked you what was the relationship dynamic. And his expectation is that you will clean up after him. Your expectation is that he wouldn't be a slob. That clearly was a conversation that you all should have been having in the vegetable aisle instead <laughs> of running off to the Denny's, if you know what I mean. Yes, Your Honor. And if you have a date with somebody more than two times, you'll learn what kind of person it is. Did you ever go over to his place? I have not. He lived with his mother previously. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I have asked don't they all? to be introduced to his mother, and he will not introduce me to uh, his mother. I really don't like uh, my mother meeting the people that I'm with because it's always it's always a jinx because the people I go out with are close to the age range that she is, and then by that time, it just really kind of just tanks. I guess they figured that, the, oh, I'm the same age as his mother, so now it kind of feels weird, which... You and, like older women? I prefer their company. I don't like people my own age. It just drives me up the wall. And these, these are the older women I can have a conversation with. And I know who Clint Eastwood is, right, Judge? You know who that is. You know, the interesting thing about it is an older woman that's single yeah. allows you more shenanigans than a woman your age yeah. would put up with. Well... Because I can tell you right now, a woman your age would probably say to you, get your stuff and get out of my house. Actually, I couldn't stand people my own age because of the same shenanigans. I don't know where people my age range or generation get off having the same the sense of entitlement. I don't. I certainly <laughs> don't either, sir, as I look here and talk to you. Well, no, you have just... this wonderful sense of entitlement <laughs> oh, as nice. you sit here and you're talking to me. Oh, You've okay. got a woman who is footing your entire bill. And you think because you got John Travolta hair from the 80s, that works. <laughs> that don't work. Oh, oh thanks. OK, Where? it does not work. Where? OK, it does not work. Wait, work on her, You're but it don't work on me. Who was the woman he saw you with? It's one of my friends, Joan, that uh, Laura thinks I'm having an affair with. What's your relationship with the defendant? Purely platonic, or did it become romantic and or intimate? Uh, no, I bought two cars for him. So <laughs> what did you get in return for the Corvette and the Volkswagen? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Your Honor, he even still goes to his mother's to eat dinner sometimes. I stopped cooking for him when he, I well, figured out what anyway. a slob he the was. The food he gave me is like cat food. It's like, you know, it's not even the good cat food, like nine lives. I get this garbage food. <sighs> not true. I'm a very good cook. Fine, it's Frisky's food. Raised my son and I fed him well and he's turned out really good. He's nothing like you, Joe. Which... So, okay. Cheap, a slob, no chores, this whole thing with the and mother. Maybe another woman. Uh, my son doesn't like him, and my son also saw him with another woman in the grocery store, another older woman. That, that's your spot, right? Other people go to the club, oh, but you go to the grocery to store. The I don't like the club. Because you like know what? Food. The next sugar mama is in the vegetable aisle. That's why you go to the grocery store. Could be the deli area for Uh-huh. Or the seafood I go, spot. I, I go Your Honor, mother's... I have some evidence. My son mm. uh, has done a videotape for us, so... Actually, I know that your son wanted to weigh in, so I'd love to hear his point of view. Let me see that evidence, please. I haven't really agreed with the relationship from the beginning because he's way too young for my mom. Um, and, and from what I'm hearing now with them living together, he's a slob and I guess he's behind on his rent. So, you know, no shock there. But also, when I went to the grocery store not long ago, I saw him in the parking lot flirting with another woman, which, you know... <laughs> Obviously, he's he's not being faithful. Anyway, besides the point, he's way too young and immature, and my mom deserves better than that. Mr. Rosen, you know that her son doesn't care for you, right? Oh, I do now. Mm-hmm. Who was the woman he saw you with? Well, I think that's my friend Joan. She was really upset that her dog was dying. And so you were having a conversation with her in the parking lot of the grocery store? Yeah, it's one of my friends, Joan, that um, Laura thinks I'm having an affair with. Actually, I think that's Miss Figley. As you all identify people, we reach out in the court to see if they will come and give us their perspective. Your son uh, agreed to get his point of view, and I invited Miss Figley to join us also. She's Robert, will you there? ask her to join us? I asked you to introduce her to me, and you said no. Well, you weren't around. 
Ooh, Miss Figley got the red outfit <laughs> memo. She and I are together today. Here's my favorite color. Miss Figley? Yes. How are you? And you look beautiful today. Thank you. What's your relationship with the defendant? Uh, we are just friends. We talk quite a bit on the phone. Um, we have things in common. And when did he, you meet? Uh, about a year ago. So in the middle of this relationship that he's having with Miss Cooper, you all met. Is that fair to say? Yes. I know it's not usually polite to ask a woman's age, but you're looking so fly over there. Am I allowed to ask? 74. You go, girl. You told me you were 70. I wasn't a Well, I mean, just... I'm, I'm old enough to know better, but sometimes I don't know better. <laughs> um, ooh. So, Miss Figley, what's the nature of your relationship? Um, we talked for about six months before Joe told me that he had a girlfriend. I didn't know this at the time. In those six months, was it purely platonic or did it become romantic and or intimate? Uh, no. I bought two cars for him. You bought two cars? Yes. Um, what? I bought him a red Corvette. Miss because... Figley! I know. I thought I you said I don't always do everything <laughs> the right way. Like way years ago before I knew you. Miss Figley, you bought him a red Corvette? Yes. Wow. Why? Wow. Well, he needed a car. He was, you know, having a hard time with his jobs and whatever. So I bought him a Corvette, but he wrecked it. And so I bought him a Volkswagen after that. You didn't tell me she bought you cars. That's crazy. Nobody's business. Miss Figley. Yes, it's nobody's so business. So no. what did you get in return for the Corvette and the Volkswagen? Come on, girl, what'd you get in return? Well, we had sex one time. And it was really good, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Sorry to say that to you, Laura. That's about all that happened. We just talk on the phone, basically. But it's over. The intimate yes, relationship is over. Yes, we're just friends right now. I don't want to get involved in another person's relationship. How could you do that to me? <laughs> Sorry. I can't I, believe... I'm, like, 15% sure she really... And did she's another older woman, you know? He's not with... It would be different if you were with somebody your own I age. Like I could understand age. that. It's just so annoying. Jeez, they're damn phones, and who cares? Like, you're a land like, like an adult. Like you're I a straight gigolo. That's what you are. You're a gigolo. What's that? You're, you're somebody who preys on older women, and you know how to smooth talk and make them feel good and make them feel wanted, and clearly you're good in bed. And actually, you're probably in court looking for the next one that you can slide into their home. Nah. OK? That's the kind of person that you are. And I think it makes you feel good to think that you're slick and you hurt people's feelings. And this nice lady right here, Miss Cooper, has allowed you to live in her home and has allowed you um, the privilege of being in her bed. And the same thing with our witness here, Miss Figley. Miss Figley gave you some really nice gifts, and you took advantage of that. Well, and you enjoyed it. But oh, guess oh, what? Oh. This is one woman that's older who is not charmed by you. I actually find you to be slightly sleazy. That's and I'm going to tell you right now, the best thing that you could ever do is put his pictures and plants in a garbage bag, because I'm sure you bought the luggage that's in your house, and send it right outside on the door. And please, don't think that you have been humiliated by him. He humiliated himself because of his behavior. It was not man-like. It was boy-like. I hope you enjoy your mother a lot because you're gonna be sleeping back at her house. Thank you, Your Honor. Ooh, his pickup place is the grocery store. His pickup line is the cucumber. We've heard gas stations, I think laundromats, the parking lots, now it's the grocery store. And Denny's is the place to go after you pick her up. I really hope this lady puts his butt out. He need to go back to sleeping on his mama's couch. But not to worry, because there'll be another older lady... I know. ...that he can prey upon a Corvette and a Volkswagen. Come on, get out of here. John DeVolta wannabe. 